I would like to call the October meeting of the Julian Cuyamaca Fire Protection District or Fire Prevention District, according to KPBS, um, to order. Um, we will begin with oral communications. Uh, anyone who wishes to address the board on any item not otherwise on the agenda may do so. And uh, please keep your remarks to three minutes or less. Uh, we'll move to um, the list of sign-ups. Rebecca Morales, please. Hi, um, I'm a resident of Julian. I live at 1910 Second Street, and for the last two years, I've been working with the Julian Community Planning Group in trying to get the county to uh, maintain, to repair and maintain Second Street, the portion from um, the top of the hill as you're going from the library over to the north, uh, down to about Cape Horn. And in the time that we've been working with them, we've consistently gotten feedback that the street is too steep. However, we've also been communicating with the fire department and the sheriff's department about the need to improve the street because it's an important secondary emergency route. So uh, we, have, we had letters of support um, by people who are no longer here. Uh, with fire, from the fire department and the sheriff's department, uh, once again stating their support, and we asked uh, the Department of Public Works to come meet with us, all of us, and residents, to see how this street is used and why it is so important to maintain it. A little bit of background, um, the county improved the road from Cape Horn, um, on 2nd Street up to Cape Horn, and part of Cape Horn, in 2004 in order to make it easier for people to get to the elementary and high schools. But they were admonished and they were warned by residents not to do that because that would then encourage people to use the street. That street had been dirt until then. They went ahead and did it and now the street is commonly used by everyone. It's used by everyone. Not only residents wanting to get around Main Street when it's busy, but all of the emergency vehicles, um, elementary, high school buses go through there. People walk it. Everybody uses that. And now even visitors to Julian commonly park all the way up there in order to go to town. So I am in the process of circulating a petition. I, because of um, other things that are going on at the same time around the elections, we stop the petition and we'll wait till after the elections to continue. But I have a copy of the petition that I want to give you. I have a copy of the letter that was written before by Rick Marinelli. Uh, and I have um, something that I'm not going to leave with you, but that shows you where uh, the area is that I'm talking about and some of the problems we have, major potholes there. I'd like for you to consider either a uh, giving your support for this in the way of another letter or by signing the petition, and I'd like for you to consider this. Um, do you have any questions before I show you this? Yes. What you're talking about is it's fortunate to not maintain county easements. It is uh, owned by the county but not currently maintained. So it's not maintained Correct, and they can make exceptions. They say they don't do it because it doesn't meet county standards. It has to do with the steepness of the hill. However, they do have the ability to make exceptions, and we're asking them to make an exception. So let me just show you. Yeah. I recall uh, when I was on the planning group. This is the picture of the street. This is a picture of the street. This is the petition, okay? The petition's back there. This is where it's located. So they originally paved it, they just haven't maintained it. No, 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 no they it never paved did. Paved by the Zerbe and by the way. Oh, correct. So and Zerbe, Betty okay. Zerbe was the one who said, don't do it. They did it anyway. There's a copy of the petition in here. Right. right. So, okay. so, um, so this is. This How many signatures do you need, or is it just 
Uh, the, it's this not. Get, it's not something that's official. That is, it's not going to get on a ballot. Okay. I currently have 124 signatures. Um, when it's over, I have asked the Chamber of Commerce if I can put the petition in town hall. They said yes, and everybody signed it who was on the board. Um, I've already talked to uh, the Sheriff's Department, and they supported it and signed it. And it's just an issue now of I want to wait until this is all done because too many petitions, too many things, it's confusing. And besides that, this is not something that's going to be repaired easily. We've been doing this for two years. We've identified the potential for community development block grant funds or from funds from uh, the supervisor's <coughs> office to take care of this. Uh, we just have to show them that there's enough support to make an exception. So I don't know what you want to do, whether you'll write me a new letter or um, sign the petition, but I'd like for you to consider doing one or both. Okay, the petition is yes. coming around. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, yes. So yes. this is the picture of how it's deteriorating, and this is the area that we're talking about. Here's the industry. Uh, here is Second Street. Here's State Court. Post Office Library. It needs resurfacing. It needs more than resurfacing. It needs to be uh, fixed, widened at the yep. top and perhaps put in stop signs or something else. They need to work, they need, we need to form a committee here and they need to work with us, not just make decisions. Yeah, that's the um, Planning group is where? The planning group has been behind because they've been the ones sending out the letters and writing them. Years ago, we tried to get a stop sign down at Cape Horn. This is a That's a difficult intersection. Right. Um, but the county said no. Okay. Not enough traffic. Uh, well, oh, that's another thing. One more thing. We did ask them to come and do a count of the traffic that uh, uses that road, and they said they couldn't because it wasn't a county road. So we have catch 22. So I just want you to know we've been working hard at this. So I don't know what you want to do. Um, would you prefer to sign, just sign the petition, or give me another letter? This item is not on the agenda. Uh, I'd suggest we put it on the agenda for our next meeting to consider uh, either writing a new letter or endorsing the letter previously written by Chief Marinelli. Morales, uh, another month isn't going to cause your grief, is it? Uh, no, it won't because uh, we think that we're going to try to, to get community development block grant funds or some Good. form of funding, which mm -hmm. will be available for another year. Yep. So, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Uh, we, we can't consider things that come up under this item on the agenda because they're not on the agenda. Correct. But we can put it on our next agenda. And should I come back to that? It'd be nice. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Tony Harder. My name is Tony Harder. Um, the notice of this meeting says that a copy of the board packet may be viewed at JCFPD. Um, I requested that on Friday and was advised I couldn't pick up a copy until Monday, which I did. I believe the notice of this meeting does not satisfy the 72-hour requirement given to the public to be able to study the attachments and provide input. 
the board is legally charged to consider public comments in their decision process. This isn't the first time legal requirements have been ignored. This is not a properly noticed meeting as Monday is less than 24 hours before Tuesday and the public was not given adequate time to thoroughly review items you may be voting on. Thank you. Brian Crouch. Good morning. Brian Crouch from the Firefighter Association. By the way, it's a nice look, Jack. That mountain man look, that's pretty cool. <laughs> it's got to get hotter than shit down in 29 Palms, so. Um, I have a couple of things that I want to bring up to the uh, to the citizens. I'm sure you guys are all aware of this. You've got this packet already. Another perp case. Got uh, We just got back. So things that were going on are still going on. Um, Jeremy, you're, you're listed in this this time. Sorry. Um, I get to go sit in front of your people up there next time with Gina. So... Um, also, I want to ask, because I've heard that being the association president, I get a lot of stuff from the folks back. Have you guys received the sexual harassment uh, case that's being brought up against the district? Okay, I just wanted to, that's just something I heard. I didn't know if it was, was, was there or not. I get a lot of stuff from a lot of folks that call me, ask for uh, advice. So, other than that. Thanks, Kristen, for not wearing your uh, association stuff. Kathy Goddard. When we get to that point, just raise your hand. Thank you. Something yes. that Brian said, Herb, I don't know what that is. Public Employee Relations Board, State of California. And they're charged with hostile work environment complaints? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Among other things. Uh, Lori Foss. Hi, I'm Lori Foss, and I just wanted to reiterate that I'm concerned that not everyone has read the contract that they signed in conjunction with the Riverside Cost Recovery Plan. And it's relevant because that's where Chief Meacham came from. And after 17 minutes and 30 seconds in their own CAL FIRE report, it states that uh, uh, survivability is unlikely, brain death before resuscitation is unlikely, and the proposal from CAL FIRE for Julian is 23 to 30 minutes. Now, Riverside does not get rain, snow, ice, or fog. We do. That was not taken into the calculation for the response time for Julian. It will be longer. And to let you know, we don't have that long. If somebody has exsanguination, air obstruction, airway obstruction, cardiac arrest, they don't have that time. And if they can't find us, and we know that they have difficulty finding us, there's no question about that. I myself have shown Cal Fire employees how to find my neighbor's house because they didn't know where it was. Now, I'm not saying that it's the boots on the ground's fault. I'm saying we love the boots on the ground. We just want to make that clear. We think their administration sucks. We feel that they are inept. In fact, Ed Sprague at the uh, LAPCO hearing cited the management of this station by the CAL FIRE chief that was in here that everybody claims to adore, who has sexual harassment charges against him, claims that they claim to adore him. There is no way in the world they claim that he had piss poor management of this station. Now, why would we have CAL FIRE come in and do it again? when we already have piss poor management. And that's a quote. And, and that's a quote from Ed Sprague. Those are not my words. That's in the CAL FIRE, that's in the LAFCO hearing. And then Chief Meacham got up and said he could make it to our house 
in five minutes. Now, one of the women on Facebook stated breaking all land speed records, she could not reach the high school with her child in five minutes. Now, somebody's not telling the truth, and I could tell you exactly who that is. And it's not the supporters of the volunteers. Now, that's all I have to say. We put our lives and our children's lives in your hands. And you didn't read the contract or the time constraints. Time is essential in getting to It doesn't matter. You can call in a 1,000 resources. They are all rotated out of our area. You can call a 1,000 if they're 30 minutes away. Game over. It's already game over. We're already dead. And we don't have 30 minutes in Julian. We need both fire agencies in Julian. We need CAL FIRE. We need you guys. We need Julian Volunteer Fire Protection District for structure, medical, and accidents. We need both of them to survive. No matter what you guys are doing or what you've done, you put us at risk. You put our lives at risk. We need both of them to survive. During the Cedar and Witch Fire, we had both. Not one single civilian life was lost during that fire. And the CAL FIRE is responsible for the life of Stephen Rucker when they lit that backfire. They were found criminally res or responsible for lighting that backfire that killed him and for the backfire that burned my house down. Now, they don't know the area. They don't understand the terrain. We need both of them working together or we're not going to make it in the next firestorm. That's it. Those are all the folks. Signed up to speak, so we'll move no, along. I didn't, oh, wait. Wait. I didn't have a chance to sign up. Heather wasn't able to sign. Thank you. I should be okay. Thank you. I have prepared a public records request because I would like to confirm that each member of our board had the appropriate ethics training as required by California state law. I'm concerned about rumors that are being spread in this town. It is one thing to say you want the community to heal, and it's another thing to spread rumors in this town. And there are people ready to testify that this has occurred, and it's negatively affected people. A man was nearing the end of his life and told a wise man that he wanted to make amends about all of those whom he had spoken ill of. He was instructed to take a bag of feathers and put one feather at the doorway of all the homes of everyone he had slandered. Thinking that was easy, he put a feather at the entrance to everyone's home of whom he had spoken ill. He finished and asked the wise man what he should do next, and he told him to go to each home and retrieve every feather that he placed at the entrance. But he couldn't. The feathers had flown off to the four winds. In much the same way, we can, he could not retrieve the ill words that he had spoken about others. The gist of the story is that there is no limit to where our negative talk about others can spread. There's many versions of this story, but basically it comes down to this. In Leviticus it reads, when you speak things about others that you would be ashamed to say in their presence, you're not only disobeying God, you're also destroying that person's reputation in the mind of your listener. According to John, when you find yourself gossiping, repent at once so that God will forgive you of a terrible destructive sin. Gossip has its roots in jealousy, hatred, and self-pride. As a result, you are murdering the person in your heart. Central to many teachings is the power of healing and forgiveness. We can't recall hurtful words, but we can speak new words of apology, and it's not easy, but broken relationships can be often be restored with a tough conversation. The other day I was asked where I obtained the blood that I put on a board member's house. And I'm going to say right now, I have never put blood on anyone's house. And the problem is that when you go around town and tell people things like that supporters did something to you, put blood on your house or tried to run you down with a car or tried to run over your dog, supporters is a very wide circle that reaches to everyone sitting on this side of the room. Please be careful. Please ask for forgiveness. There is a store in town that I cannot enter because they believe that about me. I can't go in the store. Please correct it. This is important. Not only is it illegal, slander, and libel, you don't know how you're affecting someone's life when you spread things like that that are untrue. It's huge. 
It destroys lives. It is important. And we all have a personal responsibility to make sure that we're not doing that. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else who did not sign up who wishes to speak? Seeing none, we'll move along with the agenda. Uh, we'll move to number nine, Chief's report. Chief. Jeremy? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I missed the uh, reports and the consent calendar. Uh, are there any changes to the agenda? Chief? Yes, any changes to the agenda? Uh, well, we do have one item on the... Uh, I'm advised we're removing item number 23 from discussion in the uh, closed session. Thank you. So if you'd all scratch number 23. Any other changes, Missy? Nothing. Jeremy? Okay. Um, moving to the consent calendar. Does anyone wish to remove any item from the consent calendar? Can I ask a question? Yes, you may. Can I ask questions? I, I've always been very confused about the financial report and the profit and loss by class, July through August, shows um, total expense for ambulance and total income and the fire. But when you look at the ambulance budget, total income, total expenses, none of those ever agree. You can't, you, two you can't, books, I've never been able to reconcile the budget versus the profit and loss. Profit and loss is a form that's generally used well, well by profit-making organizations. I'm well aware with the county principal. Yep. But my question is, even if it's a budget, and the budget is showing your actual year-to-date expenses and income, yep. wouldn't it seem likely that that would match your profit and loss numbers? It never Not happens. necessarily, yeah. But, uh, Personally, uh, the profit and loss statement is a moving document. I don't pay much attention to that until the end of the year. They're the same but the, dates. the budget. July through August, they're the yeah. exact same dates. Okay. So the profit and loss is covering the exact same period as the year to date budget. Yep. But the figures are, are never. Nope. Never even close. Nope. I would be concerned about that. I've been concerned about that for 30 years uh, because a profit and loss statement, well, in, in government agencies, we don't use profit and loss statements. They just aren't used because they're um, normally used for uh, private profit-making organizations uh, as opposed to government organizations where the budget is what you're dealing with. What's the budget is, what you spent to date, and how you're on track with yeah. with that. Uh, so I'm I'm, just saying I'm more reliant you're... I'm more reliant on the on the budget than I am the profit and loss. But, uh, if you can reconcile profit and loss, more power to you. I I don't know if anybody else on the board the here. Profit, profit and loss. I I ran them for my law firm. Profit and loss just says this is our income. This is where we spend it. This is what yep. we have left, which is exactly the same numbers that should be on your financial report. Would you like yep. me to explain? What? Would you like me to explain yes. anything? Missy. Yeah, I'd love to have it explained. Okay, so one of the issues that we've always had here since I have been here is a lot of the columns on the P&L from QuickBooks are not a part of the columns on the budget. These spreadsheets are archaic, but that's what the board voted. So there's some items on your P&L that are not included in the spreadsheet. So you're basically approving financial statements that are incorrect. I'm not approving anything. Missy, you're no. sitting on the board here. I'm not approving okay. anything. The board let's not get in That's an, how the P&L. The board will be approving a financial statement that's not. The not board done. passed this right. as their budget. As their budget, not their right. expenses and income for the year to date. Okay. Thank you. Uh, 
we'll move back to uh, the consent calendar. Anyone wish to remove any item from the consent calendar? Seeing none, is there a motion to approve the consent calendar? made to approve the consent calendar. Is there a second? I'll second it. Ida seconds. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion is carried. Move to the Chief's report. Okay, good morning everybody. Uh, so a couple things. Uh, last board meeting we had the, our uh, financial officer to come in and talk about uh, some things that we may want to set aside some dollar amounts for in the future uh, for some station improvements. Some of those things were climate event station generator and water filtration system. Um, we're moving forward with getting bids for those so that you can have a real idea of what they would cost for this station versus what the county proposed. What, what's a climate event? Climate event is an exhaust gas okay. uh, System to, to pull the right. exhaust from the trucks out of okay. the engine. Okay. Thought that's what it was, but never heard it called that. Climate Vent is a is a company that does it. Um, so with those, we've had vendors come out. Um, we had a vendor come out and do water testing to figure out what is the best um, filtration system would be for our system. We've had a guy come out and several come out and. Uh, look at our system for generators, including automatic transfer switches and placement, things like that, and then obviously the final event system. So we're waiting for numbers to come back from that. Um, when I get those numbers, we'll present that to you guys so you have an idea of where we are for this station specific versus the general numbers that the county gave us for those items. Uh, Rescue 56 and Engine 57 are being worked on at South Coast. Um, we talked to them last uh, Thursday. Last week, uh, engine 57, two additional weeks estimated. They're waiting on some hard to find parts due to the age of the uh, piece of equipment, but uh, is estimated two weeks. Rescue 56, um, they are working on it, but every time they pull something apart to fix it, they find another piece that is either broken, damaged, needs repair. So there's still extensive work that needs to be done on Rescue 56, and no time frame has been identified for Rescue 56. Uh, Brush 56 is at Advanced Mechanical. Um, he is 90% complete with the work that he needs to get done there. There is a steering component, the drag link. Uh, that vehicle is not originally from the factory four-wheel drive. And so there was some specialty items on that piece of equipment that were ordered when it came uh, to us. That is the holding factor right now. There are several little things that John's working on in the process of waiting for that part. He ordered the part uh, several weeks ago. It took several weeks to get there and it was the wrong one. So now he's working with the parts manager uh, from back east somewhere is where the parts have to come from for that one specific uh, drag um, But as soon as that comes back in, uh, he should have everything done on, on Brush 56. Um, the garage door maintenance that we talked about last time, uh, there was still an outstanding balance because there was two things that they found while doing maintenance uh, that needed repair. They were the, the uh, bump switches on the bottoms of the doors that if the door comes <coughs> down on something, there's a switch in the bottom of the door that uh, reverses the motor and goes back up. Two of those were bad. Uh, they replaced uh, both of those uh, parts and labor at a cost of 24 $2,425. And there is a piece of conduit on this one that is still um, going to be repaired by them at no cost to us. It's part of the installation. Just some just some uh, link issues that we're addressing with the company that installed it just to make sure that it's right. Uh, Medic 56 uh, went in for the warranty work. I believe we talked about it in the last, uh, in the last board meeting. The repairs were made under warranty for um, the water pump. The turbo was also replaced under warranty, not part of the recall, but under warranty um, while they were in there. Um, there was some additional maintenance 
not under warranty, uh, fuel filter, oil filter, crankcase filter, and air filters were changed, and as well as the oil, as it was due for, or almost due for a service since it was in there. Uh, the maintenance and labor for the turbo install uh, was not under warranty. The parts are under warranty, labor is not. So it's, the total cost for repair on Medic 56 was $1,166. Um, Thursday or Friday of last week, uh, the medics came to myself and Matt with rear tires that were uh, needing to be replaced on that. Yesterday, uh, John came up and uh, he took it down to his shop with an estimate of $700 for the tires to be replaced. They were replaced. He doesn't have, uh, the estimate that he gave me yesterday did not have labor on it yet. He estimates a couple hundred dollars for labor, so $700 for the tires, and those, are, those have been replaced. All four, or just two? All four in the rear, and we just replaced the two front ones two right. months ago? A couple right. months ago. Yeah. Um, Slow down, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the rear tires. They're peeling out on the way to go. Doogie. The rear brakes, uh, he noted while well, he had the wheels off, were down to about a third. Uh, nothing is going to place it out of service right now, but he is going to get us an estimate for repairs on those. and. Uh, based on his estimate, uh, we will be moving forward with replacing those brakes uh, shortly. Uh, so last last uh, board meeting, we hadn't had any updates from Cal OSHA, and that was going to be the report today until last night, about uh, or yesterday afternoon, about 4 o'clock. Um, I got an email from Tim, several actually. Um, he let us know that uh, he's caught up with his workload, and uh, as we had reported, several meetings ago, he had several cases bending at the same time. Apparently he has finished up with those and is now focusing on ours. So there was a few questions that came for, for both Missy and myself on uh, some of our uh, SCBA and fit testing uh, that we're doing here and he wanted to set up an appointment uh, within this, this week or next to come out and visit with me and go through some of the stuff at the stations as well as uh, visiting engine, or excuse me, station 57. So that is moving forward. Um, I talked to Chairman Perez on the auto aid, auto aid agreement with Santa Isabel uh, several weeks ago. Um, the issue was that it must be voted on by their board, just like we have a board here, um, and they missed the, the date for last board meeting. So that's why it's been extended until now. Um, he didn't tell me when the next board meeting was, but he told me, he assured me that it would be presented at the next board meeting. Uh, and According to him, he didn't have any reason to think that it would not pass. However, it does have to go through uh, their process. So he told me he would get back to me when the vote is done and the decision has been made. So I will keep you guys in the loop. So we got all the outline, or the, the, the map figured out exactly where they're going to come? Yes. That was all figured out, so that's what they're going to be voting on? And then the, the agreement itself as well as the map. Okay. So the map, uh, as you know, the county entered into agreement with them. So the county's agreement already comes up. Uh, but our agreement uh, for your uh, direction wanted to come up to Williams Ranch Road, right. and so that was what I presented to him. It adds an extension of two or three miles in addition to the, the county agreement that's already in place. Uh, so I have the maps and stuff uh, in my office if you if you wanted to look at what I was what I was proposing or what was sent to him. Okay, thanks. Um, as you guys probably noticed, uh, the big pile of uh, asphalt that was out there last board meeting um, got moved. Engineer Salzoni and Captain Reynolds were able to rent a tractor and spread the asphalt grindings to cover the parking lot. So you notice that this part of the parking lot out here, pretty much straight off the, or a couple feet off the engine bay out here, all the way over has been paved, if you will, loosely paved. And then the edge here and the parking lot where the vehicle is parked over there. Um, so we did rent a tractor through the district. Um, for them to do that, the cost was $516. It was a two-day rental, and uh, Reynolds and uh, Salzoni worked pretty hard to get that done because it sat there so long. It was concrete, basically, and uh, it was pretty hard to get it done. So um, we did, as mentioned in the last board meeting, try to get uh, uh, a few of the locals. Uh, Sal's gone out of back that he had mentioned that he may be willing to let us borrow, but those uh, those options fell through for us and. That pile wasn't getting any softer, so we decided the best bet was to uh, rent a vehicle uh, to get it spread before it was permanently a pile out there in our parking lot. 
Uh, that also should help with the, uh, the degrading of the asphalt on the corners here on the edges because people were driving over them. They started to break the edges of the asphalt away. And so now with the uh, transition, if you will, with the, with the asphalt grinding, it's helped out a lot just in the time that it's been here. So. Um, and the last thing on the list is the EMS date update. Uh, Medic 56, as most of you are aware, not all of you, um, was unstaffed two days this last month, September 21st and 22nd. Um, an agreement with Mercy Transportation was drafted and signed, and Mercy covered for a total of two days with a cost of $8,640. Uh, we received two notices from the county, one for each day for failure to meet our contract up here for uh, EMS. Um, and that was due, I, if there's any question, that was due to a, a scheduling conflict, not a staffing issue uh, for the ambulance. Um, one EMT resigned since the last board meeting, so that's, we are at a total of one paramedic and one EMT to this point. We have the potential to lose one more to a potential fire job. Um, won't know that yet, we're still waiting for a job offer on that, but it's, we know it's coming. We have flown both the EMT and the paramedic positions. Um, they flew from last board meeting that we talked about uh, opening them up to the public, uh, for your suggestion, uh, Director Kramer. And uh, those were open until 9.30 of uh, this last month. We received one outside candidate and applications for, for, excuse me, for one application from outside for paramedic and four internal of, the, uh, of our part-time employees and five EMT applications. Uh, after Matt had talked to the part-time employees about interest in moving to full-time, none of them wanted to move to full-time, so we have one interested party uh, for paramedic and still the five for the EMT applications. So um, I talked to Matt again yesterday and he's going to be working on uh, interview questions and the interview panel and um, we'll be interviewing uh, those six individuals for move, moving into those positions. Um, with that said and with the previous bullet of having some scheduling and potentially staffing issues moving forward with these uh, uh, vacancies. We have uh, two current open paramedic positions on the schedule that are as of now that aren't filled that, that uh, we are forcing the paramedics that are on duty now so that they're aware that they need to be on those days. However, that's not a sustainable model. Um, so we're going to be working with continuing the open process to keep the uh, paramedic and EMT positions open flown, meaning any interest at any time they can submit applications. We'll be reviewing those, and we'll be doing interviews as appropriate when we have them. Um, the other thing is, <coughs> excuse me, uh, I asked Matt to come up with some alternate schedules. So working with the current number that we have or less than optimal numbers, maybe potentially moving the schedule from a 4896 to a different schedule that may allow for us to cover more days. So he's working on those. Um, and I'll be able to present those to you uh, next board meeting if that's something that we wanted to, to look at of changing the schedules with the same amount of people since we're having a hard time filling those positions. That is the end of the report unless you have any questions. So any questions of the chief? Well, we just got to staff the ambulance, so whatever it takes. Yep. Have you, uh, have you, excuse me. Uh, what we contract with Mercy, how soon before the 20th? So we, there was a lot of phone conversations uh, that day with uh, Rick Roche, who's the president of Mercy Medical Transportation, County EMS, uh, Matt, myself, all of the, the paramedics and, and part-time paramedics and anybody else that we could try to find to staff it on our own, um, all the while trying to work with Mercy to get a backup plan going. Uh, Rick was kind enough uh, to, and the county as well, because we can't just bring anybody up here. It has to be an approved county vendor. We have to have an approved contract with the county to let them in. Uh, it, it was very, uh, there was a lot of work that went into getting that ambulance here. Uh, to answer your question, 
both Rick and the county were gracious enough to let us put an ambulance in here prior to a contract being signed with the gentleman's agreement uh, over a conference call <laughs> that each party would agree to the agreement. And so they were able to cover. Uh, we only had about, a, I believe it was about a two hour uh, gap where our staff couldn't cover anymore. They, they staffed until I believe 1130. And Mercy drove up here uh, from Pine Valley starting about 1230. So there was, there was about an hour and a half to two hour gap where there was no coverage up there. And fortunately, we didn't run any calls during that time. Is this contract still valid? It <laughs> is, yes. So the way that it was written, um, as, as I, I, I asked Rick to write it, not just for those two days, but for us as JCFPD. So if we have, excuse me, future issues, the contract with the county and the contract with Mercy is in place that they can come up here and, and staff tomorrow uh, if for whatever reason we had another issue. So we won't be <coughs> I hope as you should that we do not. Have for 30 years. Um, I'd like to suggest that you and Matt take a look at our difficulty in filling the positions. Is it pay? Is it uh, work conditions? Is it uh, com competition with other agencies? And uh, because uh, we seem to be losing people to other agencies and we're having difficulty recruiting new people. Uh, if five of our current part-timers aren't interested in working full-time, or at least here, uh, we might want to take a look into that. Uh, our work week, most most places work a 56-hour work week. Ours is about a 51 or 52-hour work week. So there's, our people are getting paid for 56 hours and they're working much less than that. That ought to be an attraction. Yeah. Uh, so just for information, uh, the four paramedics that are part-time employees that were, I'll say, interested, put in their application for the full-time and then were not interested in interview, was they told Matt specifically it was because of the duration of the contract and they were worried that the ambulance wasn't going to be around. Okay, thank you. So I just, I don't understand the difference between the Any other questions of the, the chief's county report? county contracts with the state for their employees, as well as so in this case, the, that's who we the county, not It depends on okay. what you're talking about. Specifically. I'm ta well, I'm talking about what we think the services will be. So if we the county, we don't pay for uh, the state, because that's what we pay for in our taxes. Are you talking about this engine right here? No, I'm, I'm talking about Cal Fire Engine General. So the engine we. This is a different conversation. I'm not sure we want to go down this road, nope. but I'll explain it to you pretty basically. There's very two different distinct versions. You have Station 50, the state employees paid for by the state. You pay Cal Fire out of your state taxes for those vehicles. This engine here is a county engine that contracts with the state for their staffing. So you pay the county for that engine that is staffed as part of the contract. The county pays the state reimbursement for the employees on that engine. Uh, Thank you, variety of reasons why we can't just ask the paramedic who's on the engine to come over here and work the ambulance. A variety of reasons why that can't, can't happen. Okay. But the big plus of having a paramedic on the engine is offset by the huge loss of the paramedic on the ambulance. Yep. Okay. Thank you. In the back, Scott. It seems like we've always had trouble since yeah. the new construction. 
So have they ever worked correctly? Shouldn't the new construction still be paying for it, the general contractor or warranties, and not the district be paying for them? Yes, so in the last couple of board meetings, this has been a topic. Uh, yeah. The warranty has expired on the general contractor's work and labor and parts. We went through that when I first got in here in June. Uh, the last vendor that we had come through here identified several issues with construction, initial construction, and some of the reasons why the, the doors continue to fail and has fixed a lot of those. That's not a guarantee on these doors because as you see, it's not like your garage door that opens and closes once a day and you leave for work and come back. These open and close multiple times every day and that's that door there weighs probably a thousand pounds. So there are things that go wrong with them more than they would at your house. Uh, we've tried to mitigate that with the, the processes and the uh, maintenance that we've brought in within the last couple of months. But again, there's no guarantees. We just hope that it's gonna be longer this time than it was with the last. Yeah, we should be still Thank you. I had another question. You said last month and in the minutes that the tires were changed on the support 57? Correct. Um, are you sure they were changed? I haven't looked at it, but. Okay, because I have heard that they weren't changed. So. Who did yeah. you hear that from? from? From one of the firefighters. Who did you hear that from? From a firefighter daughter, my daughter, that looked at them a few weeks ago. Okay. Well, Thank you. Because we paid for them, so if we didn't, we've got some issues. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Excuse me. Okay. We'll check on that. Yes. Chief, I have a question about the spending eight thousand six hundred dollars for uh, the ambulance when you said it wasn't a staffing issue; it was a scheduling issue. That's right. Isn't that something that you're responsible to make sure that we? If we have the staff, why wasn't the schedule correct? And why did we have to spend that money? So the schedule was done. I don't have anything to do with the schedule. You're right, I do see it. Uh, and it was full up until that morning. The problem was is that uh, Matt, our EMS director who does the schedule, was under the impression that the employee was scheduled for September 21st and 22nd. The employee thought that he was scheduled for October 21st and 22nd. So the schedule visually was full. Nobody had any indication that there was nobody coming in until the morning that nobody came in. When we called that employee, he said, I was never signed up for September. He told me specifically October. So it's a, a simple miscommunication that went from very simple to very complex uh, in a very short period of time. And there was nothing awesome. that, yeah. So both, both the employee and, 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 well, both employees, but Matt and the, the paramedic both thought that they were on the same page. One thought that they were scheduled for September, and the other thought that he was scheduled for October. Very so simple is there now a way okay. to make sure that doesn't happen again? Are you opening up more communication between people? Uh, the problem specifically was email and text between the, the employee and, and Matt, and it wasn't specific to October 21st and 22nd are open. So there's, there's a long email chain that, that I've gone through and, and talked with Matt about being very specific in these types of instances and we need to be more specific moving forward. We hope it'll not happen again, but you never know. Uh, let's move on to the uh, item number 10. Yes. We, we've gone over this before, when I first got here in June. I told us that none of it was under warranty and they were not going to be paying for anything. Um, that was the point the where we decided to move to a completely different yeah. contract. I meant the contract. Mm. The contractor himself, or the entity themselves. To, to answer your question, yes. Themselves. And they were denied. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Let's move on then to t-shirt design, review bids submitted, take action for design contractor to award. Uh, this is uh, presented by Brian Kramer. Well, we got two bids, it looks like. And it looks like White Duck Designs a low bid, so I think we pay per bid. And we know what the design is. Okay, we've got two bids for t-shirt design. One from Wet Duck and one from 
misconcepts. And wet duck is lower than them, and she's been our printer all the time. So I say we award wet duck design the contract for the what is it, 60, six t-shirts? 60. 60. And uh, why aren't we raising that to like 72 is usually where the breakoff point is for bids to pricing, right? Well, thus far I've gotten 16 people who told me the sizes of their t-shirts. So I don't even know. I'm just saying that you get a price break at 72 t-shirts usually when you're printing. All right. So I'm saying just wet duck design looks like the best price. I think we should up to $72 or 72 t-shirts and we might get a price break even below what she has there or shouldn't be too much higher. So something I'll add, Brian, uh, and I didn't catch this until late last night, but the Web Duck Design t-shirt is a six and a half ounce t-shirt. The other two are eight ounce or better. Um, just for information, and you guys can move forward as you see fit, but the minimum standard for uh, most departments is an eight ounce shirt. Uh, because it's not just a uniform shirt, it's also a PPD worn under uh, the Nomex for Wildman fire. So there's some there's a portion of uh, there is no eight ounce t-shirt. Yeah. Six, six I'd like to. Uh, what I'm wearing right now. What I'm wearing right now. Gildan or I'm not saying it's the brand. I don't know the brand. There is no anything above 6.2 or 6.5 ounce in a Gildan or a Portland company or any of that. All right. Well, I'm not here to argue with it. I just, okay. uh, the other thing is, and nothing against anything else, but uh, the guys have complained about the T-shirts coming from from a wet duck that don't, they do not last. The seams blow out. If it's you know, the brand. We'll change brand. Could be brand. But what I'm saying is, if we're going to do that, then maybe we should redo the uh, the bids to be one for one. Well, I didn't put the bids out, so did anybody specify exactly what t-shirts we wanted? Gildan. Okay, that's what we got the bid for. Yeah. So, what we specified, we got the bid for. I understand. Right, I just want to make sure that you have. I understand. Bid. Yeah. So, is this a Gildan? I don't know what the old t-shirts were. BCTs. So this is a new new brand? BCTs were the ones busting. So that's a different brand. Buddy? Okay, I uh, ran a t-shirt printing business for about 30 years up here. And I can tell you the difference between Gildan and BPT. BPTs have gone to crap over the past five years. Their stitching doesn't hold up. Once you get it wet and uh, they stretch you know, it's just not a decent t-shirt like we once were when I started doing this, hell, back in 1875. Mm -hmm. So that's... I'm not really fond of t-shirts anymore, anyway, so... <laughs> that's a question. All right. Uh, uh, we have this for the discussion on the t-shirt. Oh. Well, I just say we we go with Wet Duck. If you don't like the design, if you want to change the sure. type of shirt, we should do that. But we put out the bid for what we asked for. Brian, okay. so the presenter. Um, I don't know where miscellaneous concepts is, but I'm assuming since it's not across the street, it's going to involve shipping, which makes their quote much higher then, as well. Is Mejia behind that? Is that Mejia's company or something? Mejia is that no. one that I wrote. Um, it's incomplete. But. Who is, who's this company that um, gave us the this, was, this was not in the material I picked up on Friday. So I, I just to, received it. I wasn't able to look at it. Yeah. But, well, we're supposed to have 72 hours to look at things before the meeting. But the miscellaneous... Yep. It says, oh, his, his is for hanging PPT. No, this says miscellaneous concepts and at Gmail. Right. So I don't, I, know where, I don't know where miscellaneous concepts at Gmail is. But if it's not across the street, I've ordered a lot of things online. And generally, it includes shipping, which is not included in their quote. And it doesn't actually specify the uh, manufacturer of the shirt. It just says navy blue sleeve short shirt. And I can tell you that the Haynes ones, because um, I've ordered them in large quantity, 
they're not the same quality. The second okay. brand okay. is a company out of Arizona, and engineer sells only lives there. He's offered to pick them up there with the ship. And why would we okay. rather buy shirts from Arizona? I make a motion that we accept the bid from Wet Duck Design, let her print up the t-shirts, and move forward. Okay. In a larger amount for a discount. Right. Uh, well, if we're going to go with a larger, price. assume that there's going to be a larger amount for a discount, we need to allow them to give us a larger amount for a discount. Because why do you want to buy no, that? Let's just case. go with wet duck design. They're here. They can do it. We can be done with it. And according to the bid. Right. According not 72. Okay. According to the bid. Not 72. Fine. I'll Fine. order 10 more shirts personally to make you get a discount. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, well, I wanted to buy them for the Explore program, and I volunteered to buy T-shirts for everyone last year in the Explore program, and the Explore program was never actually allowed to come to the station, so I didn't, I didn't do that. So I will happily buy 10 extra T-shirts so you can get even a better discount, because I think okay. we need to support the local, local businesses. Thank you. Uh, <clears thros> yeah, second the motion? Is there a second to the motion? Did you ask? Are we going with the space? What did you say? What did you say about the safety of the t-shirt? So nobody And that was after protection Okay. okay. Is there a second to the motion to award the contract for the purchase of T-shirts according well, to this? I still haven't finished. Oh, the okay. Question. Okay. If it is going to protect our guys by going with eight ounces, they don't make an eight ounce. We just looked it up on the internet. Okay. Why can't you tell us the name of the company? So Gildan does not produce an eight ounce shirt. No, no, they don't. Have no, we know. Why not? We'll find a ring I don't know. You have to ask Gildan. Eight, this is an eight ounce shirt right here. Yep. This is eight ounce pot. This is not tea, This is not the ring spot. This is a regular hit. So where do you guys get your okay. shirts? You have to buy our oh, well, let's find the I think just because well, other agencies use eight ounce t-shirts doesn't mean that we have to. We can go with a cheaper t-shirt, right? And if they don't last as long, we'll just buy more. Right. Well, well I think they do last longer. That's what they were saying. They we're last voting on what's in front of us. That's right. Any other questions? Okay. Is there a second to the motion? I will make that second. Buddy seconds that we um, purchase the t-shirts according to this proposal. Uh, any further discussion? I had a question, Jack. Yes, uh, Jeremy. I, I thought last week, last week, last, last month, month, yeah. board meeting that we had talked about the design, but in your emails uh, you specified we had not decided on what design yet, so maybe that is. I guess I it's going to be whatever design this Crouch wants to make. No, it's no. the official design we discussed last month. Okay. I have an old t-shirt from from this district, and the legend across the back is straight across the back. Okay. Not well, arch. When Mayor Nelly was here, we went through this. Yep. It's the arch design. We changed the design. Right. Yep. That was the official one. According to Mayor Nelly, that's the official one to wear. Okay. When you're on duty. I have that artwork. I, yep. If you use the artwork that I've been using, there is no setup charge. If right. you have the artwork um, available. <coughs> no, we're talking about the arch like right there on the ambulance. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That was the design. Okay. That's what we agreed on. That's so how much will the cost be for the artwork to be determined? It's already determined. And she already has it, so there's no setup charge. It's the same. So there's no setup. She's the got the design, she's got design the stick. on the T-shirts that no you had before. Mm -hmm. They're a screen version, but there's no Okay. Any further discussion? 
All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. 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 Motion carries three to two. Moving on. Status of ambulance service and transcripts from LAFCO hearing on 9-10-18. Presenter Brian Kramer. Okay, that was about what we heard in the LAFCO hearing. When Keenan Sims said that our board had voted to give up the ambulance contract. Yep. He says, both agencies, in particular, Cuyamaca Board, has signed off on it. We never even discussed it. And how come he's saying that? That we're going to give up our contract to the ambulance in, in the interim before LAFCO dissolves us? Where did that come from? We never even discussed it before. I know. That's what, so where did he get that information that our board had voted on it and gave it the okay? Ask him. I'm asking the board. He said the last well, You're part of the board right. too, this Brian. Is I know. Discussion. That's why I'm saying we didn't discuss it. We never we discussed it. We didn't discuss it. We have not discussed it, to my knowledge. We have never voted okay. on it. Maybe according I think to you the we have. But behind this whole not according to me we have. According to him we have. And I just want to know where he got that to put it forth. So I do have to do a FOIA request of them to find out? Sure. I got no problem doing that. Do it. I just don't know why he said okay. that in public. Okay. That he said that we approved it. Our board approved it. Discussed and approved it. Well, maybe he's not correct. Um, well, this okay. is an understanding that from what I gathered, and I'm not stating this is the facts, I'm just from what I personally gathered, that if we dissolve, the contract has to go somewhere because JCFP will no that. longer be in existence. I understand existence. that, but he said in the interim before that. that happens. Okay, my understanding, and that, there again, my understanding was that if we go forth with the dissolution and at that point, the county will assume our contract, but I don't believe it was met before. Well, that was my the way he stated. It. Okay, right. I guess I didn't. I'll contact him. But to ask our him contract to ends when? June Pardon? 2019. Right. So we still have the contract till but if we June dissolve, of 2019. But he stated that the solution goes through the contract. King stated that in the interim before yeah. we'll give up the contract. Okay, I'm just saying. Okay, so he did. I know that. Yes, he did. About what so he did. So I want to find out where that came from. Okay. How do we know where it came from? That's what well, that's why I'm about. asking the board. I'm, I'm not sure we're mind readers, Brian. What are you saying, Jack? I mean, you're I'm, asking I'm just me. Asking if you're the board, asking me. I said the board never discussed it. You're asking so where me did to. Where did he come up with this? You're asking you're me to read Keen Simon's mind. <laughs> you're, you're the one that talks to them all the time. No, he no, I'm does not. not. No, he does not. No, I'm not. That you're is a big you're lie. the president. You talk to LAFCO. Oh. You're the one that oh, LAFCO, goes LAFCO. between LAFCO and our board to talk to them. I'm not saying you okay. said this, but I'm saying somehow he got the idea, and I want to know where it came from. I have no idea. I have not talked to Dean Simons before. So, if we're going to discuss, I talked to him at the board at the LAFCO meeting. I have not talked to him prior to that. Who's been Who's been negotiating with LAFCO? We don't uh, do it. We don't. You You were supposed we to go down LAFCO. and talk to LAFCO. You two no, were no, supposed no, to go no. down LAFCO and talk with not the county. LAFCO. No. That was a long time ago, and we negotiated the conditions of we, we dissolution. We negotiated with the county, we but did we not didn't talk about uh, giving okay. up our contract okay. before we dissolved. I just want to find dissolve. this. Out. I want okay. clarification. Okay. Give so Brian. Give Brian clarification. Somebody. I'll do it. I'm reading this, Brian, and I'm with you on the, on the very last comment, but if you look at the second page, starting at 1641, it says, we also we are also recommending that the county, excuse me, Julian Quebecer Fire, add the condition successful contractor offer 
XXX. Right, right. I understand that. So oh. I, based on what I'm reading here, it looks like his intention was that we consider adding that. And then that comment there, obviously by the comments here, Community Magna Board had signed off on it. May have been an inappropriate comment for sure, but I think that his his we intention was that he was trying to give us a recommendation to do that. Okay, I understand that, but what? still. Excuse me, please. On at the end, he states the that the Cuyamaca Board has signed off on this. On page 10 of the LAFCO documents that you've attached to this agenda, it says, the second special term identified by staff involves conditioning approval on JCFPD establishing an interim arrangement for an outside contractor to assume ambulance transport services for the greater Julian area in step of honoring its H-H contract. And the term is not supposed to expire, but the county does not have prerequisite job classifications to directly staff and assume this service. It would also, they have to hire the five employees. And I listened to in addition to it being in the own LAFCO recommendation attached to your agenda on page 10, at the meeting I listened to the tape again and it clearly said that they have discussed with the board terminating the ambulance contract, signing it over to someone now, not, not in December, not when we're dissolved. We're not dissolved yet. That's correct. Says so right and here. That's they right. want you to do a new ambulance now. Okay. Obviously, we're not going to. It says we you, have the contract. Says they discussed so. it with you. Yeah, but that's they not can't. true. No, we're still a district, so we, they can't tell us what to do as far as it comes to the ambulance. They can ambulance say whatever the they want. I'm just telling you what the LAFCO meeting, the gentleman said, and what it okay. says Thank in their own documents that you have attached to your board agenda today. Okay, thank you. Heather. So since there's a public commonly made comment that misquotes the board, I'm yes. assuming that Yes, I'm that's assuming. not the first time. It's no, happened no, time no, and no, time no, and no, time no. again. But and there's nothing we can do about that. Well, there is actually. Yes, there there's is. There's a significant and important thing that you can do about that. And working for a public agency, I've seen it done many times. You can mm -hmm. issue a corrective statement. That's an option that you have. Because obviously the public is worried and concerned, and you're responsible or answer to the public. So you can issue a corrective statement if you so choose. Well, it's an action that I, We can't retract what somebody else said. No, I didn't say that. Yes, you did. You you just said no, I did not say it. that say it. someone should issue a retractive statement. But you can issue a correction to something that was publicly stated. Okay. Brian, do you want to make a correction? Did not I want to talk to Keenan about this to oh, find out okay. where they got the information and how they need to make a corrected statement. Okay. So do you want to put this on next month's agenda then? Sure, we can pass it along to next month. Okay, okay. let's put this on next month's agenda. Um, a follow-up. As a follow-up. about timing. Of timing? Of what they're talking? Yes. I, I definitely like that. Yep. Um, <clears throat> move to item number 12, future status of Station 57 property. Um, quite some time ago, uh, Chief Marinelli reported to the board that he had had discussions with, uh, and I don't remember when this was, quite some time ago when we started talking about dissolution. Um, the uh, county had expressed uh, a lack of interest in the Station 57 because there's a CAL FIRE station right next door. So uh, Chief Marinelli spoke to Butch Paddock, who is the um, general manager of the Lake Guiamac Recreation Park District to see if they would be interested in taking possession of that station for it to serve as a community center. 
particularly to be able to host uh, meetings of the fire safe councils from uh, throughout the Julian area. Uh, Mr. Paddock was very interested in that concept. Uh, I took it upon myself to uh, meet with uh, Butch Paddock uh, a couple of weeks ago and just to uh, either confirm that they were still interested or determine if they were not interested in taking over that property. Uh, particularly since there had been an inspection of the property, which uh, showed uh, considerable, considerable deficiencies. Deficiencies that are beyond uh, reasonable uh, expenditure to repair, as far as the county would be concerned. Uh, met with Butch Paddock, and I'm just reporting to you about my meeting with him, and that uh, the Park and Recreation District is very interested in taking uh, possession of that property uh, along with the two and a half acres uh, that was purchased by the district uh, uh, several years ago that adjoins the uh, property that the station's on. So I'm just reporting to you that uh, they are still interested. So in the event that uh, dissolution proceeds, um, I would certainly recommend that the, this board consider uh, deeding that property to the Park and Recreation District to be used as a community center for that area. Uh, I'm sure that'll be long after I'm gone from this board, if it even occurs at all. If we don't dis dissolve, uh, then it's a moot point. Any questions from anybody? Any questions? Thank you. We'll move on then. Staffing schedule, ambulance department. Chief Rossler, uh, did you cover that in your report, or yeah. do you want this Yeah, I don't have item any staffing to go for this month, so it'll be on next month. Okay. Oh, I apologize, I didn't realize that was on. Okay, thank you. We'll move on then to the Julian High School Pathways. Excuse me, I have a question. Yes. in the future we notify everybody in the world no, that he's on vacation no, we've said. never done that before and it's so it's new I've taken your suggestion and we're going to ask Missy when the chief goes on vacation, send an email to all the volunteers that the chief's on vacation. That would, and be, that would be nice. It'd be better than the emails they're not receiving for training that they say they're uh, not so we're, we're not going to personally notify every volunteer you have face to, to face. We can, send, we can send an email. Emails are reliable. Okay, Missy. Moving on. The Julian, Julian High School Pathways. Yes. Yes. That's so it would be given and nothing would be received. That's correct. That, that doesn't seem like it. It's an exchange it between two government it's, entities. It's still being, it's transferring to another public entity in the community for use by the community. Okay. Um, it's on the microphone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm not sure. Just now, there, there it is. Um, Julian High School Pathways. Okay, I, I want to make a correction. It's not the high school, Elementary. it's Julian Pathways. That, that's my error. So, um, Julian Pathways called and they want to know if the board is still going to move forth this year with the um, Toys, for tots. To Toys for Tots that, we, that you guys do 
previously with the Volunteer Firefighters Association um, for this year. They're ready to submit a list of the needy families and children, so I need the board to let me know what well, to do. James has always been in charge of it, so. Um, he has no longer on the board. Huh? But Oops. he's no longer. He's no longer on it. Exactly. I, mean, I have uh, Dave Gentry in charge of uh, talking with Dan and all that. It's already been done. My only <coughs> thing is getting possibly an engine down to the, the site. The association's still doing it like we always have. We're doing the trunk or treat. Um, but Dave Gentry is, is uh, heading that up right now. Okay. So it's day. it's on track to happen again. Yes, we just we're just going to need to borrow an engine test or something so we can have it so we do the But I have should, a question. Shouldn't be a problem. So is the you know how like Ida and some of the volunteers would go with the association, do, do the shopping. That was the fun part. They're going to do the it all. Gentry's going to do it, correct? He's just heading it up. We're still on the people. Okay. Up and up and he just took scholars. Okay. Okay. No reason we can't stand here and wrap presents after we fill the purse. Okay. Okay. So they don't need help. So it'd be no change. Yes. Pain. They'll still. They'll still. You're still soliciting volunteers. Yeah. Right. It's, it's yeah. Still, it's still on schedule for still the, the same. Uh, Sunday after. No change. After Thanksgiving, we do it every year that way. Okay. Okay. That's still the way that it's set up. We were just getting confirmation from uh, DHN. You're supposed to reach out. Okay. All right. So that's let that's good to know. We'll let you know you're, you're going to be involved. You got to push the shopping cart and go shop. We're we're going to we're going to do all that stuff we have in the past. Okay. 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 Do you have questions, Ida? No, no, I'm just nope. wondering if it's going to be the same as before, like a hundred dollars per kid, and that we spend so much on clothes and so much on yeah, everything and that it's like nice before. big so like presents. Right now, you turn it okay. over. Okay. And he turned it over to David Gentry. He, he was he was he was asked if he could help, and so he's gonna he's okay. gonna be in charge of, of reaching out. And, you know, okay. Just like before. Sounds okay. good. Sounds good. Thanks, Brian. Uh, Explorer program. So it was my understanding uh, two or three months ago that the Explorers program was uh, put on hold due to the summertime. Everybody's out of school for summer. And recently I asked Kuiper for a report before this meeting and um, he doesn't have a startup date or any, I guess he needs direction that the, that the JCFPD is still moving forward with the Explorer yep. program, so he can head that up again. I, we I don't think. You said Missy, he that's to open it back up after football season because all the football players want to be in the Explorer. Well, a month or two ago. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's not what he said a month or two ago. It's Missy, in the that's what he said. Let's. He said that the Explorer program he's going to put it on hold because all for the, the summer. Yeah. He this? said because the football players were. Well, okay. Their season, and they want you want to wait till the end of the season. I don't. I don't think this is something that needs board discussion. I think Why it's. Uh, on the agenda? Because I didn't know if the board wanted to move forward with the Explorers program. Yes, we do. All right. There's no reason to change it, and it's up to a uh, matter of uh, Kuiper and uh, Chief Jeremy to work out the details, and I think. I had heard the same thing that uh, Brian mentioned, that uh, there's concern about conflict with football season, and I don't think that's something that we need to get involved with. That's uh, right. We'll let Kuiper yes. work that out. All right. OK. Uh, we have no public hearings today, so we'll move to old business, uh, updated revised standard operating procedures. I don't have anything for this other than if Brian had something that he wanted to uh, to comment on or anything based on your... Uh, I went through the um, documents comparison and there were just I, there was thousands of changes made and I think it, we need a committee to look at it and really review it properly. Some of the language I read 
either doesn't sound legal, doesn't sound kosher. I mean, there's some things in there that just don't sound right. You know, so I think we just need to look at it with more eyes. And I'll have your, your suggestion is a small working group yeah. to go through it. Yeah. I think that makes good sense. Um, and uh, is that any board member willing to serve on a small working group? Two of you, buddy, yeah. Brian. Fine. Yes. Okay. The ones, two of you, get together with Jeremy. Right. Uh, and just sit down, go give, through it, I'll page by page, so you can see the changes that have been made. And, I've got another uh, question. What, Jeremy, to Chief, what SOPs have the people been signing? Uh, we stopped that once everybody decided that there was so many conflicts. Before you were having them sign the new stuff? No, nobody signed the new stuff. Everybody was signing the 2010 version. Okay. So and I just want to clarify that it stopped because of the. Okay. The well, they can still sign the old one. It, it's valid. Yeah. It contradicts the SOPs and the MOU. That was okay. the whole reason that we started going through it. Let's. Uh... <coughs> Let's give it two two months to work through the. Uh, you're going to need a couple of meetings, I'm sure. Right. Given how long this thing is, so let's uh, let's schedule that for the December meeting. That work okay, buddy? With you? Good. December, Brian. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, Hiring process for district chief position. Buddy? Okay, everybody got a copy of the, yes. what we have here. Which one's it? It's at the very end. Buddy, use your football voice. Pardon? Football voice. My football voice. My football voice. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Yeah, oh, okay. Okay, everybody got a copy of this uh, minimum qualifications. Basically, what I did is I took our last job flyer, combined it with job flyers we did when we first hired a district chief back way back when. Uh, the only thing that's going to add major change here is that the chief will either possess an NR National Registry EMT-1 or get a National Registry EMT-1 within six months of appointment. And the uh, new fire chief will have possession of a Class B CDL and with driver operator certification or get the license and the certification within six months of appointment. That's the only changes we've changed. The only changes that were made in this job script from our last slide. What's the, uh, is there a requirement to live in district? No, you can't, you can't do that. Okay. Yeah, I just wondered. It's desirable, but not required. Didn't break yet. We can require them to live within a reasonable distance. Yeah. Uh, Fine frame or something. Well, Mason does that. You got to live within 30, 30 miles 30 of your first end. Yeah, 30 minutes of the first end. Yeah. So my son has to deal with it. Typically, 30 minutes has been an acceptable yeah. uh, distance by the courts. That's why when Ken Kremensky was a uh, battalion chief with Lakeside, he could live in Julian. But as soon as he went further down, then he had to move. My Lemon Grove firefighters could live in uh, Alpine as long as they drove 80 miles an hour yeah. down the hill. So all I'm asking now is for, uh, let's get this thing approved, let's get this process going. Make a motion. Do you want to make a motion for that? I'd like someone to make a motion. <laughs> uh, is that a motion to approve the job description? All right, I'll Buddy. make the motion to do it. Okay, second? Second. I'll second. Any further discussion? I think the salary is going too low. Well, we'll get what we can, but that's salary. That's what I'm worried about. Well, you can always find somebody who'll take the job for that well, amount heard, of money. I've heard a report that it's been said that three people are already in line for this job. So 
are willing to take this job, but looking yep. up for um, 2018, average salaries for this, the low being 89 and the extreme high being 160. And we're offering 71 to 81. And um, that's a concern for me. Okay. That an average supervisor down in a plant in Poway makes the same as someone who's going to be responsible for well, life and property and all the firefighters yeah. and being IC and everything. So. Okay. You know, I don't sit there and make comments and laugh and mock yes, you, you guys. Yes, and you when do. I have, yes, under you your estimation, I have been chewed out for it and you reprimanded do. publicly. I would ask when I speak to the board that I'm allowed to speak to the board without comment out there at this point towards me and laughing. You Thank you. Jack? Thank you. That's my... Thank you. Buddy, what... Yeah, justify this. I've okay. got right now three uh, well three one soon to be retired two retired chiefs that are looking into this that currently meet these specifications from city departments mm -hmm. they're looking for yep. a retirement job they're already probably making 90 to 200 thousand depending on what it's they're yep. making chunk of change they just want to pad their income. they'll be right making they'll be getting this much from their purse retirement yeah. so at least it's They'll be doing if they quite well. The three percent of fifty, they can be making a whole lot more than. Yep. And this includes any insurance, like the cost of government, everything. This cost, yeah. or is this their salary? It includes three hundred dollars per per it's month. Negotiable. No. Per month yeah. on towards uh, okay. The three hundred dollars is in addition to the salary. Yes. Yeah. That's that's base salary. Okay. Any other comments? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Okay, buddy, the next uh, issue is when we start the recruitment. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to abstain because I will not be part of the board by the time this hiring takes place. Therefore, I don't want to be, for all I know, the next board may want to redo this and have their own input. They so I'm not sure if I should even be voting on this at this point. Okay, That's your abstention is accepted. Thank you. Um, Missy, note that uh, Kristen abstains on that issue. Okay. Uh, I guess the next step is to set up the recruitment process. Put out the ad. Well, it's a lot more than just putting an ad in the paper. Unless we don't expect to get any. Okay. So you uh, to put it out right away, or whatever you guys want to start. Uh, get it out. After October 16th, we have the final number of votes. I don't think we care about, or I don't think the rest of the board cares about the dissolution process. Going forward to hire a chief. Well, they'll be aware of whoever we, we hire yeah. or talk to. They'll be aware of what's going on. And uh, okay. What's the wish of the board? If you want to get the recruitment started. I suggest waiting until after October 16th. That's only next week. It's not that big of a. Our budget approved the hiring of the fire chief. We just did. Okay. Should we hire him? No. I mean, our, Let's, our, uh, the budget we just went through included salary to hire a fire chief that we've never hired. So moving forward. We don't, we don't have that much money. We don't have that much money in the budget for a fire chief. We'll have we to. Did have Put it in the budget. Gave your secretary forty thousand dollars. If you okay. remember, thank you. If you remember, this is a temporary position. When we hire fire chief. The jobs that she's doing right now will be taken over. The stuff that she's doing that she was doing with Rex will be taken over by the new chief. Right. Yep. Yeah. So we should get one, right? Yeah. Right. Yes. Thank you. Uh, That's right. Seeing no further business, we will adjourn to closed session.